This week on The Wet Slap, now you've done Nitro Circus. Yes. How was that experience? Travis Pastrana has legitimately changed action sports like forever. How gnarly are you really? It's actually kind of a worry of mine, if I'm being completely honest. Let's talk about what does well on social media. That is the dangerous thing about social media. That's why I say I hate it. A light switch flipped when I had my daughter. It just like triggered something in me. I was like, you know what? I have to do this. Shed some light because this was an incredibly important thing to you and it's a bit heart wrenching as well. You don't know what someone's going through, stuff like that. It can change you. Yeah, when I was the saddest, I looked like the happiest guy. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't cry this time. No, you were crying. I was on the verge. I've been holding back tears the entire time. Yeah. Do you have notes? Actually, no, this is just my schedule. But <laughs> usually, hey, so I will say, this is the type of podcast where I have zero talking points. I have no topics to hit. Honestly, whenever Louis Cortese and I get together, um, it's just a good time. That's true. And we, we catch up. This is kind of our, you guys are witnessing us catching up as friends. That's true. We had a moment to talk the other day. We kind of went over a, a, <laughs> a lot. A lot of up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, brother, just how how is how's life right now in uh, bentonville arkansas with and also traveling and doing bmx and all that dude it is um fantastic like I, it's weird because i don't think i could even create a different word to make it seem as good as it really is like i've never been in the position that i've been in and so uh everything's been great bentonville is literally the biggest blessing to our life at the moment like from it's growing so fast and from traveling as well we're in the dead center of the country so we can get anywhere pretty much immediately yeah. so uh we can get to uh we can get to dallas in a couple hours we can get to denver in a couple hours chicago in a couple hours we can go anywhere and so um that place the community is just growing so fast but it's like a big small town so you go anywhere and you're bumping into different creators or different athletes or different people that are just like stoked to be where they are it seems like with where we are uh, in florida at the moment it's like people either like they want to get out and then they like resent where they're from especially because there's so many people moving here from different parts of the world that yeah. has like mirage on Florida. It's like, it's, it's, it's we, when we get there, it's going to be the be most beautiful thing. It's like, no, you just sit in traffic and it's really hot yeah. all the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> so like uh, there in Bentonville, Arkansas has literally been probably the biggest blessing within the last, uh, within the last year for us. Like I love it there. It's like, yeah, dude, uh, congratulations. You're a you've procreated yes you're a, a father yes it worked Dude. first try I, I i always knew you were uh you, you <laughs> straight were straight shooter yeah you were a straight shooter you, you had some healthy <laughs> healthy swimmers i would say oh my gosh yeah it's the it's the long hair if you have long hair and if you can take care of long hair you can for sure take care of a baby dude uh how often are you washing that thing be honest as <laughs> once a week are you going no, light? I, I shower quite often, honestly. Um, like because like the, everyone says like the natural oils, you shouldn't use so much conditioner. Dude, my hair is nuts, and it's always going to be nuts. I, I I try to wash it every other day, if not every day. So yeah, especially because we're always riding and doing something, so it's like we're always smelling like crap. So yeah, <laughs> I need to need to get it going. Well, you you kind of so you have been traveling the country. Have you gone international with BMX? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You've even gone international. Yeah. Um, you have been traveling but now you've done nitro circus yes we were dude we were kids mm -hmm. i met you through some old girlfriends yes i won't get into that for my personal uh gain um anyways we were sitting in a broken down van yes and i remember you were telling me about your some of your dreams and aspirations and so was i yeah and if i remember correctly nitro circus has been on your radar for seven eight years just like that was a cool really cool thing yeah and you've quite literally manifested it just by being yourself mm. so you've done nitro circus how was that experience um so it's it's not so i you're right when in the aspect of like it was on my radar and it's always it seems like everyone's dream to go rolling on one of those ramps or be around with that crew like travis Rashana has legitimately changed action sports like forever yeah in a way he's created action sports like it, 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 he's it, a household name yeah exactly and he's a dirt bike rider and now yeah. he's a rally car driver he's a dad he's a husband he's all these amazing things but for me um i always had seen um like nitro circus as something that that was like reachable but unreachable it's like 
there's this idea like, yeah, you can make it there, but like, do you really want to make it there? Like, is it all it's cracked up to be? Is it, uh, do they really live up to the expectation that, that like you perceive them as? And so <clears throat> with Nitro, like, uh, I had the opportunity to go to an event, um, in Jay, Oklahoma at a place called mid America, which is basically like the most gnarly redneck heaven, like on, like it is nuts. I don't even know how many thousands of acres this property is, but, um, they, they have the nitro, uh, cross track, which they have these 160 foot step up for rally cars. And like they have pools and they have like jet ski riders jumping in the pool. Shout out Mark Gomez for doing that with black <laughs> rifle. Like it's crazy. Like all the stuff that was going on, but they ended up doing a nitro circus show there. Jay, Oklahoma is like 30 minutes from my house. Like it, it's really not a bad drive to go out there. And, um, I was talking with my boy, my buddy, Troy Smalls about coming out there cause they built like a pit bike track and all this stuff. They had like a $30,000 payout for the little mini bikes and they were all killing each other on it and such. And I was like, dude, I just want to come out and hang out. And he sent me these photos of this like facility that they were creating. And I was like, dude, this is in my backyard. Like if I could just come hang out, like that would be sweet. Like I don't have to ride. And Troy's like, yo, I, I'll hook you up. Like I'll put in a good word for you. Like we'll see what happens. And I get an email from uh, Christy, which is like their athlete coordinator in a way. Like yeah. she might have a different job title. Christy, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. The woman that does all the important stuff. She's the ones that like keeps it going. Like just like rounds up the hoodlums basically. Yeah. And so she's mom pretty much. And um, it's funny because I went out there and it's just like everything that can kill you in one little parking lot, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like it is ridiculous, but we ended up going out there and I got to practice into um, the square bag that they have, which is like a, a new technology. It's like a, a giant bounce house, but um, it's a new technology to basically have athletes be able to practice tricks that they would probably never do on a, re a, a basically in fall, however, which way I can land on my head and be perfectly fine, basically. And so I went out there and um, I got to ride with Ryan Williams and Gecko and Andy Buckworth and all these people. And um, I had no idea that I was going to even ride in the show. Like the, it was like, you know what, this would be really cool to ride in the show. Like, and we had talked about it a few times and um, I was like talking to a couple like, du like Dusty Weigel and I was talking to Christy. I was like, if you guys want me to ride, like I'd be more than happy to ride. I didn't find out I was riding the show until five minutes before showtime. I'm in like oh, well, Lord. five minutes. No warm up. Nothing. Like it, the first roll in, well, I think the roll in's like 36 or 40 foot tall, and it's 55 foot gap in front of thousands of people. And I'm like, all right, well, I mean, we'll see what happens, I guess. But it was crazy because I was sitting in like the, um, like they have a whole meeting right before the show with all the athletes and such. And I'm just listening because, like, I mean, I've done shows my whole life pretty much now. Like, shows have been my income for, since 2016 or whatever, like full time. Yeah. That's all I've ever done. And I've rode for the circus. I've rode for ministry teams. I've rode for schools. I rode for everyone, it seems like, but Nitro Circus. And so I wanted to see, like, if it's different, if it's like better, if it's not better, like, just really wanted to, like, take it in. And uh, they're going through like the roster of like people that are supposed to ride and stuff like that. And Micah Kranz, their announcer, he like looks up at me and he goes, Louie, are you riding? And I'm like, what? And he goes, <laughs> you're riding. And I'm like, uh, I wasn't supposed to. He's like, no, you're riding. I'm like, all right, guess so. <laughs> and it's funny because like they wear like the button up like floral shirts all the time. And it's like super goofy. And I was already wearing one like half button up. I'm like, let's go. Let's have some fun. And it worked like. That was nuts. Like I landed pretty much every trick that I wanted to land and it it all just worked out. First roll in 55 feet, just did a straight backflip and I was like in the air for way longer than I've ever been in on a BMX bike. So it's like, holy crap, like this is yeah. insane. But I felt at home. Like I just did an interview with, uh, with Nitro Circus because we just did this huge contest uh, with them. And that was one of the things they asked me is exactly what you asked me. It's like, how did that feel? What was that like? And I'm like, like in it would like without just sound, sounding prideful or like um like i deserve this like i just felt like i was at home like i felt like i was supposed to be there and that's how it kind of feels now like for the last couple times i've been out there and been around travis and all those guys it feels like a family that is like is like like that i've longed for in a way well it's, it's probably not pride or ego it's probably just you being where you're, you're supposed to be <laughs> and we i feel like we all have those subconscious manifestations where it's not something we got to fight for it's just something we kind of know mm -hmm. in our back of our mind like oh one day i'm going to be doing x show with x person and i mean 
Travis Pastrana, my mom knows who he is. My <laughs> aunt knows who he is. My grandma knows who he is. And none of these people watch action sports. So Pastrana is a huge uh, name to uh, really like get connected with action sports. So that's great for you, bro. Yeah, he's, he's definitely like the gateway into action sports. And he's, right. he's the godfather of action sports. And he won't he won't admit to that at all. But like he really has changed everyone's lives like because of his willingness to uh to push the limits and to just be the guy that really has set the bar and now there's people passing him which is even crazier yeah like it changed my life it changes everyone's life it just takes one person to step up and kind of create a change to get the ball going and now like ryan williams he's a and travis has quoted him as the best action sports athlete in the world and ryan truly is like he's pushing the limits past what anyone thought was possible and it, I, I texted him the other day because he was working on this trick that he just landed. And I was like, dude, like progression doesn't have a time limit. Like, like you're good. Like, don't stress. Like, you got this. And he landed a trick. I think it took him like 1,500 tries or something to land this. And uh, it is, it, it's going to break the internet pretty much. And it's like, man, we really thought that that could only be done in a video game. And he did it. And now it's, he's already working on things that are just next level, next level, next level. And now like Travis is almost passed the torch on to like Ryan yeah. to like take things to the next level. So it's really cool to get to ride alongside guys that are just doing it. And like that was never my plan or my goal. Like I wasn't like one day I want to be on Nitro Circus or one day I want to do these tricks. Like yeah. I was like, I just want to travel for a living. Like I want to see the world and ride my children's bike until the wheels fall off. Like that's all I care about. And then obviously life happens and things change and you're, you're, uh, you start to gr get, grow up a little bit and you realize like, hey, there's something called bills. Like you need to make money because right. as an action sports athlete, you can make hundreds of dollars. Like it's not the best cracked up thing always. But man, I've been beyond blessed by, by bicycles and motocross and now transitioning into Nitro Circus and being around those guys. It's just another, um, another thing on my resume, but it's also just like for a sense of the people who don't know action sports and like when we travel and do other shows, it's something to create credibility. It's like this kid was there like, and I grew up like watching Travis. Like I have a photo of Travis and I, I think Travis is like 17 at the time. I'm probably like six and he, and we both have broken collarbones and both thumbs up. Like, <laughs> I wore Travis's Jersey when I was four years old. Like, so to be around him and be around those guys, it just is like, it's just so wild to look back on where we were and where we are now. And it's like, man, I can, I can't even imagine where we're going to be talking in the next 10 years, you know? So all good things, all good things. How gnarly are you really? Like when it, <laughs> when it comes to the bike, uh -huh. are you like, I can pretty much do whatever trick I set my mind to. I'll fail hundreds to <laughs> thousands of times, but yeah. Are you just gnarly? Um, I'm just curious. Cause I, people like me, we see, yeah. But we don't know like your confidence inside you. Yeah. What's your confidence level? Uh, it depends. So it, everything is calculated risk. Like that's yeah. what I've learned, especially now. Like, dude, I wouldn't say I'm gnarly. Some other people may speak for me and say you're gnarly, but I'm very calculated when it comes to what I do. Like calculated risk is basically saying, okay, if can, is this possible? And what's the risk versus reward? Like if I land this, will... I care or anyone else care or if I get body bagged is it even worth like the crash clip in a way <laughs> <laughs> so for me I believe that I can do anything I want to do on my bike if I'm motivated to do it and 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 that's a very high like standard thing to say but that's just where I'm at like it, it's actually kind of a worry of mine if I'm being completely honest because when I watch Ryan do something I'm like I, I know I can figure that out. And that, that, that's why I did the front bike flip. That's why I learned it. Cause I saw Ryan do it. And I'm like, dude, he did that. Like, I know I can do that. I'm going to figure it out. And I watched clip after clip after clip, slowing it down, understanding how he did it. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And I tried, I think that trick took me like 16 hours of nonstop trying like two days, 16 hours, like boom, fall after fall after fall to figure it out. Because there's like, there's no getting away from it. It's like, you're floating in the air like crazy and you grab the bike and you get to it. And if you don't get to it, you're getting tossed. And so 
I have fallen from the sky doing that trick so many times. And dude, the dude like Ryan can do it with his eyes closed. What a crazy, what a crazy job to be like, oh, yeah, I, I fell from the sky before. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it, it is funny, but it, it is, it is what I, what truly scares me because like getting up on the roll and like, and, and per, for perspective at Nitro, I wasn't nervous. Like I was as calm as we are sitting here right now. And that's what scares me. I don't get nervous or scared to ride my bike anymore. And when I do, I was like, okay, when, if I get nervous, I know something crazy is about to happen. Like I know like something's about to get pushed to the next level for me personally in my riding. Yeah. And like, I don't know what it is, but that's the part that scares me is not getting nervous, is not getting scared. Cause like a lot of the dudes, they have to get themselves like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they get themselves worked up and they drop in and they do something that's never been done before me. I'm just like, all right. I feel like that's like a, also a high level coping mechanism Probably. when you do something that's so s specific and high level over and over again and there is uh, a, a flip side to it like a good or a bad uh, calmness is like an odd like I feel like UFC fighters become calm I can name plenty of like shows where I became super calm and relaxed yeah. and comfortable before yeah. but it almost plays against your favor because you're like oh where are my nerves mm -hmm. I need I need some nerves right now to heighten mm -hmm. what I'm about to do right yeah it's it's something strange, honestly. Comparing podcasting to be a, to flipping from thirty feet, <laughs> thirty feet ramps is funny. Backflip's the easiest thing you can do on a bike if you just have the balls. To oh yeah, Louis, is it really really 100%. easy? Percent. Okay, you had a backflip in five minutes. Okay, teach me right now. Literally, it's. Are you being serious? No, no. <laughs> Let's go right on now. a bike. Cut the pod, guys. We're out. Let's go. Today's sponsor is SeatGeek. With 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. Maybe even like uh, little people boxing or something of the sorts. They put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated. Look for the green dots. Green means good. The red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return tickets ahead of the event with swaps. You know I came through for you guys. Use the code THEWETSLAP for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That is $20 off your first purchase with promo code THEWETSLAP. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Shout out SeatGeek. Back to the program. Dude, I was one of those kids where I've only done a front, I've only done a front flip like two or three times. Because something about me going upside down, I just do not enjoy it. I'm like, I flip. Why are you laughing at me, dude? <laughs> Nothing. For fifteen ninety five a month, you can help a child. <laughs> <laughs> dude, something about being upside down just like my proprioception just goes out the window. Really? Yeah, I'm not gifted with uh. Neither am I. Flying through the air. <laughs> <You're> the <mom. laughs> You don't think so? No, it works. You really don't think? No, it works some of the times. Uh, Logan Martin quoted, he said, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Like that's, yeah. that's my whole freaking life. Like has things came easy? Yeah, sometimes. But it's because I've worked my butt off to like figure it out and like done hours of like analyzing or trying to get to that point, you know? Like someone just brought it up the other day. Uh, we did a show and I hadn't, I, I took like two weeks off my bike. And a lot of people don't realize like in, in any sport really or any like activity, if you take time off, people anticipate like, I mean, you're going to be two steps behind if you go two weeks like without riding or without doing something. For some reason, it like it helps. Like I did the mm -hmm. show and I did tricks I haven't done in years first try and didn't even make one mistake. Like I think I did 15 tricks in that show and landed everything first try perfectly. And I was like, huh, it, it, it's weird how that happens basically, you know. Have you heard of the yips before? Mm -mm. So basically... And this is most comparative to uh, sports. People who play their sports so m much and so often, they fall into these bad habits that they do over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then the yips are when you literally forget how to play your sport because you've played it so much. Interesting. It's a weird phenomenon. Interesting. Um, but yeah, taking that step away and then coming back, you reintroduce like new ideas mm -hmm. and new movements. Absolutely. And I, I think that's how I feel with even Nitro Circus. It's like the ramp is so big. It is nuts. It's completely ridiculous. And I yeah. highly don't recommend anyone rolling in on that ramp. If it's, it's big on camera, it's like because cameras <laughs> downsize everything. Yeah. Especially ramps. Um, they, okay. 
immature weenies here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard. Uh, oh. I said that's hard. That's why I said that. Oh, immature weenie. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know why that happened. It's fine. I've never done a podcast this early. I've never done a podcast this early. And I did it for you. You're and welcome. yeah, I'm, I'm usually sleeping right now. 9.30. I'm think sleeping. About think about it this way. When you finish this podcast, you're going to look at your phone. You'll be like, wow, it's that time. And you have so much time to do other stuff. Yeah. Like wake up early, dude. This podcast mm -hmm. was actually supposed to happen yesterday. Yes, it was. Um, we both messaged each other. <laughs> Today is not the best day. Yeah. Um, and we talked about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. We brought up that um, we do want to speak on it on the on the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, shed some light because this was an incredibly important thing to you. Um, and it's a bit heart wrenching as well. Yeah. So I'll kind of just let you talk about what happened and Whew. who he is to you and all that. Great, great transition. Oh, man. Um, yeah. So. In the beginning, <laughs> no. In the beginning. In the beginning. Great story starter, just <laughs> beautiful thing. No, man, yeah, we, so we had met, you and I had uh, met up for coffee a couple of days ago, and it, it, it's interesting, like, not to say, like, our conversations can be surface level, but it's like, uh, it's, <clears throat> it's like, we are saying things without fully saying it, and it's like, we're catching up, and like, yeah, everything's good, but oh, yeah, you know, this is how this is, and this is how this is, oh, why is that? And it's like, surface level about the deep things. And so, um, for some reason, that conversation that we had just kind of like sparked something different. It's like we're goofing off when we're talking right now, and that's, I feel like now this is when the podcast is really starting. And so it's like, um, I even told you, I'm like, dude, we had this conversation, and for some reason, I feel like when we sit down to have our next conversation, we're gonna have a reason why. And um, we got really deep and talked about life and talked about um, some things that are way too common, such as like suicide and suicidal thoughts and yep. and just coming to a point that like my life, like my life's great, but it means nothing. And we both have, uh, have, have felt a similar way at some point in our life. And, <clears throat> and someone that I owe a lot of respect and a lot of love to, and I wish I could tell him right now, uh, is my buddy, Braden Meyer. Um, he got me into riding and like for, for since the day that I met that kid, we were pretty much attached at the hip like yeah. oh dude like we were we can't we started as rivals racing motocross together at date city, date city motocross and uh, we spent a lot of time uh kind of racing against each other but not really knowing who each other were and then um like you know the story about my family losing everything and uh, i was still training and i was riding by the skate park and this kid beelines out of the skate park because he recognized me and like cuts me off while i'm road biking being a road weenie and uh he basically invited me to come to the skate park he knew who i was and and it was like at that moment like history just changed like oh, dude like he him and i were attached at the hip like i said and he introduced me to bmx and we started riding and goofing off and like i'll never forget just him teaching me how to bunny hop and and basically like i grew up kind of like with no friends like i had my family and that was it like with motocross you're kind of like a selfish loner kid like everyone next to you is like you're meant to hate them you're not really friends like you may fist bump before you ride but it's like straight ahead like that's not your friend anymore like as soon as the gate drops it's like hey, they're your enemy like they're your competitor and so for me going into that world of bmx like i was very standoffish and such but he kind of like broke down all my walls like he introduced me to a different lifestyle that i had no idea about and uh we started riding and 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 just we got into so much trouble like we probably weren't the best <laughs> best influences on yeah. each other and such like we we destroyed groveland in so many ways like we had so much fun <laughs> and just did the stupidest stuff but like just bmx kids being bmx <laughs> kids dude motocross kids yeah man uh about uh, a couple out like yeah this this time two days ago uh he made a decision to uh to take his own life and it has been the most for lack of better words crappiest thing i've ever had yep. to deal with in my entire life because like you think guilt wants to set in immediately 
and you want to think about all the things that you could have said or all the things you could have done or why this, why that, at the end of the day, so, like he made his decision and and that sucks. Like it truly sucks, but I wish I cared more. Like life is something that we we forget how much, like we forget that we don't know how much time we have. Yeah. And so um, we get caught up in life and we forget about people and truly I would not be here today. I would not be riding a bicycle. I wouldn't have my career. I wouldn't have my life. I wouldn't have anything if I didn't meet Brayden. And I have to sit with that because he, for the rest of my life and know like, man, like I owe that kid everything. And he is not here and I can't tell him that. And like, I was with his family yesterday and we were just like reminiscing, looking at old photos and stuff like that. And Dude, I had, I don't think I've ever felt this like down and like disconnected in my entire life. They, um, they had, they had opened up to, um, the police had opened up to his family about what had happened and, and everything. And it seems like, um, I won't get into details just for, uh, pri- for the privacy of the family, but it seems yeah. like he second guessed it and tried to get away from the situation. And that breaks my heart even more is because like he was such a good kid. Yeah. And that was dealt a bad hand and like Brayden, like, like literally like was my best friend. He stood up for me in so many different ways. And like, I, I don't know what the future holds without knowing, like without realizing like, man, he's like, he's gone, like he's not yeah. here. And so now like with uh, now, like with Nitro Circus coming up and everything, like I, I'm, I want to like, in a way, dedicate my riding to him. Like I hope, I hope the God that I believe in has shows grace over his life. And like, maybe one day we'll see each other in heaven or something. But like to anyone who may be listening that has like some type of thought in their head, like your life's not worth it. It's like, dude, (laughs) like I've been there and I had no idea the reality that will set in when someone, you know, close to you chooses to do that. And the effect it has, it's like a ripple. It's like when you drop something in a water and you see the ripples in the water, it it affects everything. And so uh, that I, I don't know what else to say. Like, yeah. like truly it, like I bawled my eyes out like for hours. And then I get a text from my buddy. He's like, Hey, you want to go to the dirt bike track? And that was where I first met Braden. I'm like, yep, let's go. And I just went and rode and like, just kind of like pressed it down, pressed it down, pressed it down. And then as soon as we left, I just started bawling again, just because like, uh, I, it was, uh, it was like selfishly, like the biggest wake up call that I've ever had in my entire life it's like, man, you don't know what someone's going through. And yeah. in my mind, like I was even talking to my buddy Chandler, I was like, dude, I thought he was okay. I thought he was good. I thought he got help. I thought this, I thought that. And like Brayden went down uh, a path of drugs and 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 felt comfort elsewhere. And um, it, it cost him his life. Like truly, like yeah. there there is a line that you don't cross. And when it comes to alcohol abuse and it comes to uh, drug abuse and stuff like that, it can change you. And there's a point in your life that only God can bring you back from. And he felt like his life was meaningless and that he would let his family down. And because, um, because of the situation that he was in and like to hear the whole story about where he was and where he ended up and then now what happening, it, it, it makes me not want to take for granted the life that I've been blessed with and very much, um, just cherish the moments that I get to spend with my wife and my daughter and my friends and people that I want to do life with. And it's amazing because like one of my buddies ended up reaching out to me um, before all this. And he goes, dude, I'm so sorry. I haven't stepped in your life enough. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? He goes, we're reading this book, so on and so forth. And he told me a story about his family and about a family that's very wealthy. They've done all the right things. Like like blue collar family that has more money than they know what to do with. And their father has built an empire of a business. And he looked at his life and was like, I'm going to leave. I'm done. Like out of the blue. And, uh, he looked at like his, the, the empire that he built, but then he lost all his time with his family and, and, and then his father finally opened up about it and he ended up not leaving or not committing suicide or not doing whatever he had planned to do. And, Luke called me immediately after he had found out this whole entire situation. And he's like, dude, truly, like, I love you and I care about you. And I want to know that you're okay. And I want to know that things like your life is okay. And that you could be honest with me. And like, I need to step in your way more 
because we all have this like this idea like man brent's doing good like oh that's cool and you see that post or you see that story or you see like whatever and you immediately assume oh he's doing all right like dude i have been losing my mind in the midst of success like i had the i hit the biggest wall about two weeks ago before i came here like i'm not i've like, dude, I've dealt with things that I thought I'd never deal with in my entire life. And you have this this idea or this like realization like, oh, if you get married, all your lust problems are going to change or like your 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 ambition for other women is going to change. Or if when you have a kid, like you're going to just grow up and your whole life is going to change or whatever it is. And like, dude, it gets harder and it gets more difficult. Like I've lied, sealed, cheated my entire life. I've done everything wrong and I've wanted to take my own life and I've wanted to to give up on life. And like if there's anyone listening that has like had those thoughts or is having those thoughts, like know that you're here for a reason. Know that you woke up on the right side of the, like the right side of the ground for a reason. And it's easy to say that, but it's really difficult to accept that, especially when you constantly compare your life to other people's. I looked at your yes. life. I've looked at other people's lives. I'm like, man, like their life is great. Like how can they afford this? How can they do that? How can they do that? And I worked my butt off trying to get to a point that's like a mirage like it's you're never actually going to reach it you don't even know what it looks like it's just like it's this fantasy of how your life is supposed to feel and who is supposed to be around and you don't realize the chaos that you're actually in or the chaos that's around you and like i know i'm rambling on but like dude like you suffer for the right reason sometimes like yeah the, the world is a crappy and it's a evil place and we know that and we understand that but like dude like <laughs> it's still worth living in yeah <laughs> and evil evil will find you in the most glorious moments here on this like earth yeah meaning i feel when i was the first time i ever felt very strong emotions of not wanting to be here mm -hmm. i it was in the midst of doing the biggest interview for the show, which has been my baby for forever. Yeah. Um, the most money I've ever generated from social media. And I flew way too close to the sun. And mm -hmm. I got rid of the things that even got me here in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started re rewarding myself with drugs, um, women and other things of the sorts. And uh, I took the, the wrong route during my most glorious time here. Mm. Now, uh, months and months later, is the first time I feel like uh, I'm achieving these glorious moments here because I'm actually being blessed. Mm. Because I've decided to truly think about what's good for me here. Yeah, What's good for me? Mm. A lot of this stuff is temporary. Yeah, of course. Sure it's the art of like there's a lot of good doors but what good door is good for you like yeah like that's what you have to navigate and like even to not to cut you off but like even what you're talking about it's like in the midst of like my happiest moment or the midst of like my most successful moment year to date or like whatever it is why is it that those things slip in it's because it's so me centered it's about me and yeah about what i'm doing and, and and i like the the terminology that you use of like i flew too close to the sun it's like it's because you get attracted and attached to what you feel like your life is supposed to be like. And it's an addiction, just like anything else. Yeah. And like there's so many people that will that will see you in that way. And now from now on, that's how you they see you. And like that's what I've realized. It's like any decision that I've ever made in my entire life, someone has had me under a microscope. And I have to live with that. And like it's it's not always the best feeling because then someone creates a perception of you that might not even be true. Cause like I'm not the same person I was six months ago let alone a year ago let alone when we were had our girlfriends back in the day it's like, crazy it like yeah so much has changed and and i had to go through we had to go through a lot of craziness to get to where we are and it's like, it doesn't mean it's perfect it doesn't mean it's going to be all yeah. sunshines and rainbows and perfection no it's like we're still going to deal with it there there could be a day that i still feel like that that you there could be a day that you double what you did and maybe you won't feel like that and you're like wow like was i really like this selfish like man like was I, did I really care this much about getting it to this point? Because there's something so much bigger than this. And that's what I've realized in my own life to be just kind of like monotone and chill about. It's like, I don't know what's on the other side. I don't know 
how much money I can make. I don't know how big I can get or how many followers I can get. And I'm at the, I'm at, it's the most released and like best feeling when you don't give a crap about it. Yeah. And then you see the fruits of that. Because if you constantly try to please other people, you will constantly be disappointed. Like it is the funniest freaking thing because especially with social media, why are we posting content for other people? Why are we uh, posting that photo to get likes? Why do we hide the likes? It's because we're disappointed that it's not right. the traffic that we want. Yeah. It's a game that social Crazy. media plays. Yeah. It's, and, and it's meant to mix our emotions and put us in the position that we're not worthy, that we're not anything, and that those people that we're looking at are better than us and I will never reach there or so on and so forth. I, I the, the reason why like I've, I've had success in my life and whatever that measure is because the measure of success could be completely different to you you or you mm -hmm. and truly the measure of my success is to be able to do whatever it is that I want to do with my time like time and money if it was weighed like this like time is worth so much more than a dollar figure but a lot of people live a lifestyle that someone else has put a value on your time and it's down here and the money is up here. Yeah. When in reality, it doesn't really correlate. It's like, hey, Brant, your time is worth $12.45 an hour here at Chick-fil-A. And that's it. This is what you're worth. You can come and work 40 hours of your week to make money. And it's the only time you can make money. And good luck and have fun paying bills. For me, I looked at him like, this is a broken system. Yeah. This doesn't make sense. My val I've been in living a lifestyle that not someone else has put a value on my time, but I've been able to put value on my time and what I think it's worth. And you can put that in a perspective of like, oh, so you, you can say how much you want to get paid to do a show or to go speak at an event or how, or how much you want to uh, uh, pay for a hat plug. Take fun seriously. But it's... Uh, seriously. It's, <laughs> seriously. Seriously. It's one of those things where like, it's the most freeing feeling in the world because... I don't know how much I can make today. I don't know how much I can make tomorrow. I can only make as much money as I'm willing, or I can only make as much money that as I want that I'm willing to work for and how hard I want to work for it. And it might sound completely weird because so many people have looked at like the American dream as like, I'm supposed to go to college. I'm supposed to get a, get a house, get married and pay off my debt. Well, it's gone now. It's completely. You different. can't buy a house. It's completely. If you have a regular job, I mean, you can, you can get a loan with a 6% interest, but you're not winning on the back end of that. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, you would win on the American dream. Well, for me, like it, it, even even switching gears to, to talking about what we're about to get into, especially when it comes to uh, finances and stuff like that, because I do want to touch back on all the relationships with and so many different things. But like what you just said is super interesting. And to whoever may be listening, the, yeah, the, the American dream of buying a house, it is great. It's great. If statistically and mathematically, if you're going to live somewhere for longer than five years, you should buy a house. That's what every TikTok influencer always says. But like for me personally, in my lifestyle, we're always traveling. We're always doing stuff. Like we're in, in the country, we're out of the country, we're moving. And like it was actually smarter for us to rent the property value of the house that we are renting. If we were to buy that house today, it would be to about 60% more in rent. Actually, no. It'd be, yeah, it'd be about 60% more in rent. Yeah. Or more in, more for the mortgage than we are paying in rent. Right. And you know what happens if the roof has a leak? The land, the homeowner fixes it. You know what happens if my window blows out or in, in this case, my shower exploded, like a glass shower and randomly in the middle of the night exploded. I thought a car <laughs> hit the house. I grabbed my gun. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> Baby, dead asleep. Out, like didn't even fail. Out there in Bentonville, Arkansas. <laughs> Here. But it, 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 it's crazy because rent is the highest you'll pay for your, um, for your living. R mortgage is the lowest you'd pay, but there's all these fees that come on top of that. And even if you pay off your house, you still have to pay property tax. Like in Chicago, the, the, the property tax rate is 2.65%. In Bentonville, Arkansas, it's 0.65%. A friend of ours pays more in rent or more in the taxes on their condo in Illinois than we pay in rent for a four bedroom house. It's crazy. Chirac. That's what Nuts. I call it. Nuts. I hate, dude. I watch, I need to get off TikTok because now my TikTok is just extreme videos of stuff that's happening. <laughs> it's so bad. Like I see, I see Chirac way too much. Like people stealing backpacks and stuff like that. It's terrible. Yeah. I don't like watching that stuff. Mm. What do you watch? Nothing. On TikTok. Nothing. You don't. You don't watch TikTok. No. You. If I so do, it's Tom Segura. I'm. Yeah. Tom Segura is great. Segura. I'm getting the feeling that you. 
used to try and control these factors. And I feel like life has happened to you so much and so hard yeah. that you've kind of, you've quite literally, in simple terms, have a basket of things you can control mm -hmm. and things you can't control. And that and those baskets are filtered. Mm -hmm. Like you have it figured out. Yeah. If I say something to you that might bother you and you're like, can I control that? Instantly, no, I can't control that. Okay, well, I'm still good. I'm still Louie. Yeah. I'm still going to be chill, mm -hmm. relaxed, and bored. Interesting. And if you can control it, you you take steps to fix it spiritually. You're you're. I like that you said this to me because. So I started social media, kind of like a who's. Who, whose beep is bigger? You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that's what the, I started social media as. Like a, look how cool this this is. Look how cool yeah. my name is on this screen. Yeah. Um, and now. I've gotten to a point where life has humbled me so much and I'm so happy with this growth I've had mm -hmm. where social media is no longer that. Social media is like, this is me. <laughs> like, I can't hide me anymore. Yeah, Love it, appreciate it, or hate it. I, I can't control that. Yeah. This is what it is. Yeah, And I'm, I'm in the spot where this thing that I love doing, the podcast, creating videos, doing documentaries, making short films, just... Anything creatively, I like making videos. Yeah. And I'm finally at a spot where it's just me, dude. Mm. The things I create is me. Absolutely. And you said at the coffee shop, I'm and you noticing this really kind of like made me like, yeah, you know what? I am doing pretty good. I get in. You're, you're like, you're like, <laughs> what did you say? You just said you seem like you know yourself a lot more. Mm -hmm. You said that I think you said something along the lines of like, I can tell you like no. Yeah, who you are a lot more right about. now. I, yeah, I, I had said I was like, man, I can tell that you've grown a lot. Yeah, because you, you like you've stopped caring about what everyone else is doing and what um like what's going to get you views, what's going to get you likes. Yeah, you found an identity. Like, you found your own identity. Say, hey, like this is me, and you can either like it or not like it. But I'm still going to put this out there. And like that was where um that's where I got that what you were saying is just by your growth and the way that you're presenting yourself, the way that you're talking, the way that you're communicating with me in the conversation. It's completely different. Like you can tell that someone hasn't grown when they are talking about that same dream that they will not do anything about and they're still in the exact same place. It's like, yeah, man, I'm going to do this. Or it's like that next thing that like, yep, you know what? I'm going to pick, I'm taking up uh, whale watching now. It's like, whatever <laughs> it may be, you know, it's like, no, dude, like you were passionate about this, do this, like take a step out in faith and, and just do it. Like whether you believe in God or not, like take a step out on yourself, like just like roll the dice, go for it. And if it works, cool, amazing. If it doesn't work, try again. And that's where I was getting at was just like, it's so encouraging to see growth in what you're doing and not trying to follow in line about what everyone says you should, shouldn't do or what you should and shouldn't wear or like who should you, who should be on. Like this is like the 10th time I've been on this thing, dude. Like it's yeah. so hilarious. Most reoccurring guests. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we should do this till. And like, you live so far now. I know. We should do this till like we're like sixty nine years old. Can you believe that? Yeah. How that would be so full, uh, full circle. Mm. I'd love to just be an old man with some prostate problems, just talking to Louie. Oh gosh, but you're doing great. Appreciate it. Your prostate's doing good too. It's good. Sometimes I cough though, and I do feel like a sharp pain. Do you check yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I don't check myself. That right, would be right. weird. And, and, and I have on. I have people for that. We just lost 10 viewers. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it's hilarious. Immature weenies. Love it. That might be uh, some new merchandise, actually. And Immature. speaking of merchandise. Oh, snap. You like that transition? But seriously, uh, Louis has been reselling clothing on, on an app called Whatnot. Whatnot. Right? Yes. And and now you've even gone as far as to create your own brand, Take yes. Fun. Seriously. Seriously. Um, and you've just kind of just now dropped a collection of hats. Yes. And you're now uh, sold out. You're not selling anymore right right now, but you have a new drop coming out? Or are you still so we, we still have some available on the website. Um, they will be sold out very soon. Um, the, our first release um, was Whatnot exclusive. We sold out of all of them. Um, now with the website, it was more of like a family and friends release. Like, hey, if you guys want one, get one because as soon as it goes, it's going. So, um, yeah, take fun seriously. It's super legit. Um, I'm very, very blessed to uh, have had some influential people in my life, such as Travis Strana, John Andrus, other people that have like kind of said that saying all the time. And when I thought about something that I could brand myself 
and be relatable to anyone like that's on action that rides a bike doesn't ride a bike sits in a podcast or sits at their desk or train or trains whales i don't even know like whatever it is that you're doing we hope that you are having fun doing it and taking it seriously like it, it's funny because when i rode for the circus all we would do is bull like we got serious into bowling and that's where it kind of like started where I was like flying as my carry on with my bowling bag and I would, they would think it's a bomb and I would get checked every single time going to TSA. But it was like, this is so much fun. We take it so seriously. And it's kind of the oxymoron. It's like we want to have people that are sitting at a desk enjoying their time, but also people that are riding a dirt bike, taking it seriously. So it's kind of a goofy thing. But now I've realized that it's kind of, well, even in the the pre-release of things, because it's not global, it's not big, it's not anything that's uh, that is mainstream. Like a lot of these drop companies, which we want to get to that point. That's the dream: is basically have limited supply uh, for a lower cost, and just say, "Hey, like get it when you can. If you can't, like we'll re-drop it again." That's the dream for the the business side of things. But I've realized that it, it's touched a lot of people's lives. Like it's weird. Like even so much as Travis Pastrana. Like Travis brought it up, and we're sitting to dinner, and he goes tell me about take fun seriously. And I'm like, what? And he's like, and I uh, will not disclose the rest of that conversation, but he was pumped on it and excited about it. You can't, uh, you don't want to speak on the possible. I can't. No, okay. No I worries. Cannot. So, yeah. uh, th there's some cool things in the works, um, that I didn't realize, um, that people would see the hat and be like, Hey, I like the font. I like the saying, I, I, I agree with that. And we just want it to be a reminder. It's like, you can do anything that you want to do every single day. When I, when I'm at work, Mm -hmm. And I've reminded other coworkers of this, but I always re re remind myself this. I go, this is a sitcom. Mm -hmm. I'm at this location. Mm -hmm. These are the characters. Yeah. We're being ourselves. Let's let's just have fun. Yeah. And I feel like if everybody like came into work taking fun seriously, and all the customers came yeah. into work taking fun seriously, imagine a world that's almost utopian. Yeah. Right. Right. Utopia is impossible. Welcome let's be honest. Bill. Nope. Better. But <laughs> And well, is it. Bro, you're going to drive up the home prices over there and people already are going to be pissed. <laughs> already have. People are going to be mad. Uh, they already were, remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. The con oh, Wow. Oh, let's not even go. So we went, we went pretty viral <laughs> on TikTok of this man talking about a small town in Arkansas named Bettenville. <laughs> and he, he talks about it a little bit. And then everybody in the comments, you idiot. Thousands of people were like, dude, like stop talking about it. People are going to be moving here. People were mad. And people locals there. Like not probably because of me, but it's blown up. But continue. Trust me, I know TikTok's algorithm is so strong yeah. that people who like looked at any real estate in Bentonville <laughs> shared cookies to TikTok somehow. Yeah, of course. And so now all those people saw the Bentonville clip of you talking about it. So those people said, you know what? Let's do take the jump. So you know what? They moved here because of you. Yeah. Just because of TikTok algorithm. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Bentonville and Anita Royalty. Yeah, that honestly, I almost didn't even post that uh, clip, but I posted it. I can't believe that. It was so neat. Out of all the really like wise things we talk about, it's like, that's the one. Right? <laughs> Dude, let's let's talk about what does well on social media. Oh, great. Right? I suck at it. So this is, if you're tuning in, move forward two minutes because it's not going to be beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> Social media sucks. It well blow. Yes and no. Terrible. Yes and no. Worst place on earth. I think I think that's like uh I love it. What would the same I mean can't the church be the I don't want to say it's the worst place on earth but it 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 could be the best and worst. Of course, absolutely. It just depends how you use it, right? Four walls is still four walls. Like yeah. A church is usually the devil's playground because a church is built up of a bunch of imperfect people. And that's what a lot of people don't realize is like church is completely built of imperfect people trying to do God's will or trying to to live a lifestyle that is almost unreachable. That's why Christ died. It is in, it is impossible to reach perfection. So Christ died for us so that we didn't have to reach perfection. It basically beating death for the wages of sin is death. So basically saying like there's a wage on my crime, like my crime is worth six months in jail, right? Jesus said, you know what? No, I'm going to pay that price for you and for eternity so that you don't have to meet that level of perfection. I'm going to meet it for you. And through that, you will be saved. Through that, you will be like in heaven. Through that, you can get a relationship with the creator. Plug for the gospel, obviously. But it's like that it's interesting that we bring this up because it's almost as if you're running from the thing that is supposed to save you. 
and uh, Vic Murphy, which is one of my bosses, he uses, uses this analogy very, very well. And I've heard this many times. And then like even recently, it's like I received it. He goes, there's this woman that this woman that pulls up at a gas station and she's basically um, like getting gas, runs inside and she's getting something from inside. And she doesn't realize that someone had snuck into her, the backseat of her car. There's this truck driver that had noticed the whole thing. He saw it all play out and he's watching firsthand this woman that could get abducted, could get killed, like whatever it is. Right. And he sees this and the woman gets back in the car and drives away. And the truck driver in a semi truck freaks out. And he's like, uh, I got, I'm the only person here that saw this happen. I have to get to her. And he chases her down and she's, he's driving all crazy, like honking his horn, flashing his lights. And the woman calls the police and is like, there's this truck driver that's trying to kill me. And, 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 and she freaks out and she pulls off into like another lane. And she's trying to get away from the truck driver. The truck driver is there the whole time. He's like, hey, like I'm trying to like I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to help you. And she pulls off into another uh, gas station area and she jumps out of the car and runs inside like yelling for help. And she turns around to see the truck driver pulls in, jumps out of his truck, grabs the person from the backseat of her car and throws him on the ground. And in that moment, she realized that she was running from the person that was trying to save her. And that is something that we do every single day, especially in, in regards to God. Like God isn't knocking on our door saying, you need to believe. It's like, no, like the, the door to our heart opens from the inside and we choose to let him in. And like, I've realized that in the most wretched and the most terrible and the, like the worst things I've done. And that's why like I say, it's like a Hannah Montana lifestyle. It's like, I've lived one side of the world and I've lived on this side, but conjoined them the same person. That's how it was with my sin. That's how it was with everything that I've dealt with. I had no idea, even believing God saying, I'm a Christian. I, 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 I'm riding bikes to believe in, uh, to preach the gospel. I'm doing all these things. Well, on the other side of my life, I was lying, smoking, cheating, doing everything that was wrong in life, being a complete hypocrite. And so I didn't realize that I was the very thing. I was the very person running from Christ, running from God, the person, that only person that gives a crap about me, the only person that's trying to save me. And that analogy has stuck with me since I've like received it that day. I was like, dang, like that is so crazy to think about. But yeah. So. Especially when the, the semi truck has some rules, right? Right. Yeah. Like the semi truck driver has some rules too. That makes you want to drive even further. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this semi truck driver is going to make me have to not do any sin while I'm here. Damn it. Well, it's perspective. Like, it, it, it's one of those things where would you do something knowingly every single day or would you eat something every single day knowing it was going to kill you? You know, it's, you, you know, I mean, the answer is yes, though, because mm -hmm. I'm a human. Of course. And I don't know why I do that. It's well, engraved it, goes, in us. it goes back to the point that you just said. We're flawed. We, yeah. we suck. We have sin. We have all this. Like, we're imperfect people. You don't suck, though. I do. I Trust me, I'm terrible. Like, I suck. But... I like you. But even Paul writes, is like, I don't know. I do. I know not what I do. It's like, it, it's, it, it's, we're born into it. Like we're crappy in nature. Like seriously, we yeah. are. And it's like that perspective of like the give up moment. Like, you know, that give up moment. I hit my give up moment in many different parts of my life. I gave up when, uh, when it was time to get married. I was like, I'm done with this lifestyle that I'm living. I need to find my person. And got married two weeks after meeting someone. There's so many people that still think that like I was seeing Kedzie like when I was dating someone else and like all this different stuff. I met my wife on a Sunday. Sunday after that, she booked a one-way flight to Florida. The Sunday after that, we got married. We knew each other for two weeks. We were, But we were the wrong people at the right time. Like we were two completely different people and we thought whatever we thought and what we knew that this is the person I'm supposed to spend my life with and she knew that and we made that decision and we ran with it two imperfect people that just made it work. And it's crazy to think about that because it was like a give up moment. I was over it, I was done, and then I hit that wall again. And I've hit that wall again, I've hit that wall again, and I've seen growth through all of the bad things that I've done. Is it getting easier? Are the walls getting more like, I've been here, let's figure it out? Or does that human nature still kick in where you, you know, just do funny. not know? I, I, I think two days ago I would say yes after losing someone that like you grew up with that changed your life forever and that you dedicate your entire career to like i would say now like you never can't, can't put that in perspective because i've i actually 
yesterday I tried to put that in perspective, mm. thinking of one of my close friends that's kind of been there. Yeah. And I'm getting chills right now just thinking about it because it's just like, yeah, I, yeah. no words. No. Nah, what do you do? This is a, there's nothing. You don't do. And I've been wrestling with it, man. Like I've been yeah. wrestling with it and there, there's, there, I, there's no one that I could talk to to make it better other than God. Right. Like there's no one that I could, that there's nothing I can say. There's no happy dance. There's no clock. There's nothing that I could do to like, to change the fact that it happened. And of course I want to insert myself and be like, Oh, I could have done this. I could have done that. And like, I already went through that. Like in, in yeah. the past 48 hours, I've been a roller coaster, like a roller coaster of emotions and what ifs and such. But well, the oddity of just the kind of the conversation we had at the coffee shop and I don't, I've never talked about suicide with anybody. Mm -hmm. And this was before the news of anything happening yeah. with him. But the oddity of us talking about the importance of uh, asking people how they are and like truly like being intentional. Cause when, when I was in my lowest, Mm -hmm. I was the nicest person in public. Oh yeah, it's I'm not outgoing. High. I'm not outgoing at all. Yeah, but I was talking to people, asking them, "Oh, I love you know, I love your bracelet. Where'd you get it? Yeah. Blah, blah blah." This small talk turns to deep talks. Whatever. Mm -hmm. When I yeah, when I was the saddest, I was the I looked like the happiest guy. Mm -hmm. It's because I'm compensating. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you. It's a cover up. Like, yeah, and and, and and that's not for everyone. Like, there's a lot of people that I've met that are literally like just happy individuals that are stoked on life. That golden retrievers, <laughs> literally the golden yeah. retrievers of of human nature. Like, it's crazy. And like, I but then you meet that person that you see as that, and then you realize like, wow, they still crap the same. They still piss the same. Like, they still go through the the exact same things that normal people go through. Yeah. What it doesn't matter what tax bracket you're in. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter anything. You still struggle. You still go through things. And it's like, man, I, I can't process even in the midst of me being emotional and being stressed out from a young age, like wanting to take my own life to now, like, what Braden was thinking in that moment. And um, I think drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. can really, when you hit those walls that are hard to overcome, drugs and alcohol can really lubricate mm -hmm. and make it super yeah. easy to slip. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because now you're in a state of not even actually being here already. Yeah. Because your mind is not in reality. Mm hmm and it just makes it that much easier to slip. And that's why, you know, drugs and alcohol need to be respected, mm -hmm. right? There's there's things that you shouldn't try. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sick of the culture appreciating all types of drugs. There are drugs out there that you should just not do. Mm -hmm. It's true, dude. Like even Joe Rogan popularizing, uh, he has a scientist on that does heroin every once in a while. Yeah. Bro. Why? Sisters, wives, husbands taking their own lives with the uh, uh, overdose of heroin, of meth. It changes your appearance. It makes you not even look up this world. No, there's things you should not try. There's even things in, I mean, and even I'm, I don't want to say don't do, don't smoke weed. Yeah. I love weed. I, I love kicking back and chilling, but I can admit when I smoke weed, it lubricates me to the, to the dark side. Mm-hmm. It does. It lubricates me. Well, that happened. And I don't have good judgment. Uh, and, and, and it's crazy because the same effect from, from those things is the same effect that you can have from music. It changes your influence. Mm, yep. It's the same effect of the people that are, that's around you, like that you, that you choose to influence you. It's influence. And that's the crazy thing about when we, like how we were about to start talking about social media and we redirected. It was like, dude, like that is the dangerous thing about social media. That's why I say I hate it. But then, but then there is the positive. It's like, oh, well, like there could be that one video that like got me through or like so on and so forth or whatever it is. But like it, even in music, like on my way here, I was listening to Juice World, and all I can think about is how devastated I am about Brayden and how like he's not here and sad boy culture, you know? And I didn't realize how much a music can affect my emotions, but it affects me on the same spiritual, same physical, same mental level as drugs or alcohol would or sex would. That's another thing, like whatever it is, like, like you and I talked about lost and stuff like that, like some really deep things that people have a tendency to like kind of push down or make it normalized. It's a crappy thing 
that all the things that can kill you are now normalized to be praised. Like drugs, alcohol, sex, everything, like everything, too much of anything is a bad thing. Like too much of anything is a bad thing. But like, that's where we're at. Like the sex, drugs and rock and roll, like lifestyle, it will kill you and it will forget about you and it will move on and go to the next person. And that is where I've had to hit my wall time and time again as well. Like I didn't learn it one time and say that I was like, I'm perfect. Here we go. No, I learned it again. And I fell again and I made mistakes and I fell and I fell and I fell and I have to live with those decisions. And there's a lot of people that see me and they're like, yeah, that's the kid that did this or that's the dude that did this or that's the kid that broke this person's heart or whatever it is. It's like, yeah, I did do that. I did. I'm sorry that it's broadcasted live right here, right now that I've made a bajillion mistakes. Yeah, we're not cutting it out. But you crap the same. The person that's listening to this that doesn't like me, I'm sorry, but like, I love you. I, I care about you. And you'd be surprised that like, how like welcoming that I would be to a conversation with you and whoever that is or whoever that was for. Like I've had people blackmail me before by my, for my decisions. I've had people come after me for my decisions. And it's wild because I'm like, does this happen to anyone else? Like why, like why me? And it always came back to, because you say you believe in God. It's like, dude, God chose the most wretched, evil, like ridiculous people to do his will. And nothing has changed. Like we all still suck. I still suck. I still make mistakes. And I'm still trying to not be a better person, but to just be better for my family, be better for myself, be better for those around me. Because the good person mentality, it doesn't exist. Like everyone has made a mistake. Everyone has all fallen short. And like, that is why I've been able to let go of so much of my past, let go of so much of my present and so much of my future. I've, I've literally like just chilled out stop caring about what this person may say, stop caring about the post, stop caring about how much money I make, stop caring about the bills and just let it happen. Just move on, just keep it going because that's why I can't consume social media because I start to consume other people's lives and then I want my life to look like that or I start to re re reevaluate my life or whatever it is, I'm yeah. blessed, dude. Like I have a child, I have a wife, I have a family, I have a new car, I have a house, I have a career, I have two businesses, like I have all these things, but I can still make a mistake. But I can still like I like I can still fall. I still make mistakes. Nothing like, with all the good things, I bet you there's 10 10 times the more bad things that have happened or that I've done, yeah. you know? Like it's it's just perspective. Uh, a switch kind of flipped in me where I always felt like I didn't have enough here. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I wasn't getting enough here. Yeah. The switch is flipped where now I'm like, I have all these things. Yeah. All these blessings. Mm-hmm. This is a lot, especially for who I am and what I've done and what, what I what I continue to do. And you're telling me all these beautiful things are in my life, all these blessings. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I know you did not look at that little cup surprised it was empty because that thing is a one sipper. He took a sip and was surprised it was empty. <laughs> Listen, dude. You look like a giant with that cup. Speaking of normalizing, you're actually eight the feet. The coffee industry here in America What's blows, wrong? dude. Oh, why the seven dollar coffees? The seven dollar coffee for look, here, let me see this. Let me see this. Okay, so for all of you guys that, that may not know this, if you go to a coffee shop, and this is probably the, this is going to be the one thing that goes viral, right? <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. ridiculous. So if you guys don't know this, if you are just tuning in here at the web slap, if you go and get a coffee at Starbucks or at your local Local coffee shop and it's this big versus this big it's still the same amount of caffeine you're just paying for a crap ton of milk a crap ton of sugar when you could just taste coffee pay a little bit less like 60 cents less but like pay a little bit less and have the same amount of caffeine and not crap your brains out after you drink this thank you for coming to my TED. dude my girlfriend works at starbucks bro sorry I'm joking. I'm joking. That's rude, man. I, like, I have taste buds. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, need to cancel, that's it. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Starbucks is one of those companies that will come after you. Starbucks is my go-to though on the on the road. Love you, Starbucks. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's like <laughs> cookie cutter coffee, dude. That, I mean, Starbucks is dessert coffee. If yes. I want a dessert coffee, you know I will go to Starbucks. Absolutely. Yeah. Airport coffee. Yeah. Starbucks. Little cinnamon with the whipped cream on top, the heavy cream. Oh, here's another, here's another, here's another one. So if you are a traveler like me that likes to go to really expensive, fancy coffee shops and you go to these things called airports and you're like, I could never drink Starbucks. Here is a life hack. You ready? Yep. 
you go to Starbucks, right? You go and you get in that seven hour long line in the airport and you're like, why am I waiting this long for caffeine? When I can drink a Red Bull or I can drink anything. You're like, nope, I'm committed. It's going to be different this time. And the only way that it's different, that it tastes better is that you go and you get a small iced mocha, small. So it's like this bit, it's, it's like this big, not like this big. Okay. Okay. You not know, sponsored. No, nope, not sponsored. We should be. But, and you say, I need blonde shots with an extra shot. It'll change your life. Blonde? Blonde is the heaviest amount of caffeine, brother. Blonde shots. Sh- change your life. Doesn't say, doesn't taste like burnt toast. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah. Your life just changed. You're welcome. Dude. You're welcome. Stop promoting caffeine. <laughs> dude, that is... Aren't you a Christian? Speaking of drugs. Aren't you a Christian? Caffeine is a drug, dude. I, yeah. If I don't have caffeine for two days, I will have withdrawals. And I need rehab. I call it the no caffeine naps. Oh, dude. You ever hit that wall at 3, like p.m., and you're like, I got to go to sleep? No, because I drink several cups of caffeine every single second yeah, of the day. I yeah. have an espresso machine that is way too much money that I love. No, forget what I sl- Did I slap that a little hard? Was that kind of aggressive, though? Red Bull, by the way. Shout out to Red Bull. Do Oh, A, on the, uh, the documentary... <laughs> Release actually, it'll, it'll the documentary will already be out by the time this podcast drops with Mr. Uh, Cortese. Um, actually, at the pinnacle moment of this 30 minute documentary, you know what I shamelessly plugged, hmm. but you know, you know why I plugged it is because it worked was to take fun seriously, absolutely, mm-hmm. right before the final mile, yes, on the four minute 59 doc. And it's really good, by the way. It's really good. Like, I got to watch it. It's sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, I have the finished product. He hasn't seen the finished, finished product. Did I? I showed you the hat part, didn't yeah, I? you did. Yeah, I think uh, you two might be the first ones to watch the actual finished product be- when we end the uh, podcast today. Yeah. Before I post. It, so, I, I did something different with this one. Okay. I said, screw the algorithm. I said, screw the attention span. I'm going to create art. Mm. couldn't have done it without jovi behind the cam shout out jovi couldn't have done it without pj and without everybody who was a part of it we have a full i told my editor i said for the credits do an early 2000s theme credits hit it on the head bro feels like an early 2000s movie at the end it's (laughs) it's great bro yeah um louis i really appreciate you stopping by and uh thank you i love our podcast because like i said talking points are not happening it's just uh unfiltered conversation Mm mm-hmm and uh, the, even the podcast before the podcast at the coffee shop the other day was great. Um, I'm sorry about everything that's happened. Hey, um, it's crazy. You know, even even the most horrible things on this earth mm-hmm. end up making sense. Absolutely. And like we have so much to to be for like be fortunate for, and like we don't realize like how much of good influence you can really produce, especially with social media, especially with everything. Like even like you touched on it br- very briefly what not like dude what not the app has completely changed my life like truly and i thought we were just i was getting on the app to stream it's a um and like sell clothes because what not is a live auction app so basically they sell you can sell pokemon cards clothes whatever it is especially like good old shoes like these little bodega dad shoes but like (laughs) it's funny because like i thought i was getting involved in that to like buy clothes i like essentials i like I like nice stuff. Like I really do. And stuff you can have for a couple of years. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But I didn't know that like my streams were helping people. I had someone reach out to me that buys a lot of clothes from me and they were like, hey, like, why aren't you streaming? And I'm like, oh, we're on break. We're doing this. And he's like, well, like, I just want you to know, like, I've, I've been dealing with some really, really heavy stuff. And he's, he's a, he's a grown man. He's married, has kids. He's like, your streams have brought me joy like have gotten me out of this depression has gotten me out of like these thoughts and such and enough to where like I've seeked professional help through this. And I'm like, whoa. And like, what not, like just to touch on it, like, like I said, it completely changed my life. Like it fell into my lap basically. And we've been able to live a very big Hannah Montana lifestyle. Like n- everyone from the BMX world didn't know that I sold clothes. Everyone from whatnot didn't really know that I was a professional athlete and rode in big shows and such. So it's been like a very divided like uh, place in my life. And yeah. now that's taken off completely. In a year's time, we've been able to do re- like 
we've done numbers that I've never done before. Like, and anyone can make their assumptions of what that is. It's not a ridiculous amount of money, but I have enough money to pay all my bills. I have enough money to go on trips. I have enough money to just bless other people, take people to dinner, so on and, and so forth. Like, Oh, thanks for offering. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. But uh, it is crazy the amount of traffic and the amount of love and the amount of blessings that come from that app, dude. Like all the hype and hype stuff from antisocial to Supreme to essentials. I have what not, right? It. It's, and it's just what not, all, all what not, but like it's super legit. Yeah, no, I'm happy for you because I understand the struggles of financial stress with doing what you love. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it can turn what you love into a little bit more of a dangerous game. Yeah. And you rather have that financial independence with a side gig or a separate passion. Yeah. To really kind of like break free of those chains. Yeah. Because that's another huge problem with social media is people are chasing the bag. Mm-hmm. Some people are doing it solely for them. I know, bro. I'm sorry, but I've interviewed people on the show that I will never say names. I've, oh, I've By the way, I respect everybody who has been on the show. I will say I can tell people are just want the money and they don't care about creating, mm-hmm. which is okay. Mm-hmm. But like for me, I'm a creator and then the money is great and then it, it enables me to do the uh, content. Oh yeah, I mean, right? yeah, absolutely. I mean, money is just a resource. Like, uh, but I mean, I've gener- so I've generated money from this show. That's sick. But I'm definitely negative. I'm negative <laughs> on both years. Uh, this show has been a business for two years. It's been up for two years. Um, and yeah, I've generated more money than I, I've ever made at a job, but then I've also spent more money than I've ever on myself or mom or I've spent so much money. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, 100%. yeah. It, it's, it's crazy that, that, that can happen. It, a lot of people don't understand, like you have a tendency, the more you make, the more you spend. Yeah. And I've had to learn that I've cut back and such, but it just means I have to work harder. Like I like nice things. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not like bougie in any way, but like. I'd rather go spend twenty dollars on breakfast than go spend a dollar at McDonald's, whether or not you can afford that or not. Like I came from a family that was very wealthy, I was very blessed, and then I lost everything. I remember getting nickels and dimes and quarters in a five hundred dollar van with my dad to go to McDonald's, so I didn't have to eat like the like random like leftover food that we'd had from the restaurant or like anything like that. Like it was just like, and I say restaurant because my parents were running a restaurant at the time, but then they ended up losing everything. But like. We had nothing. Yeah, <laughs> so. I've had I've had uh, my mom collect my piggy bank before. <laughs> Seriously, no, I believe you. Like, like all the change I've collected, she's yeah. like, "Hey, you don't need this." You know, I, I we need this right now. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. It's it's nuts. Like thirty two bucks out of that jar, mm-hmm. and it changes you. Yeah. Like, and it makes you very fortunate about the things that you get the opportunity to do, like go out to that nice dinner or go have that seven dollar coffee or whatever it is. Like. And especially now, like we, in the very beginning, we touched on me being a dad. Like we, I mean, we didn't really talk about it, but I'll touch on it here. It's like, dude, like now everything changed. Like, you yeah. know, oh my gosh, dude. I didn't think it was going to affect me as much as it really has. And like we made the decision to start a family young. Like it was, I remember having the conversation with my wife and I'm like, we were in the midst of so many things. Like some, like we were struggling, like relationally financially like when when i got married with my wife i had literally 10 cents in my bank account she paid for our marriage license like i had nothing again like and she took me under her wing basically and i sucked and i made so many mistakes in our marriage and when it made when we made the decision to have our child it was just like you know what like we're selfish and we suck like we really we really need to like grow up and it's so it's weird to say it's like oh well that's so, so such a stupid idea to like if you think that you're not doing good and have a kid roman atwood said and i quote he goes anyone that wants the key to success go have kids i made more money than i ever have known what to do with by having kids because it changed something in me and that's how it was for me like a light switch flipped when i had my daughter like i was just like the pregnancy was great but the delivery was very 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 i almost lost both of them basically and wow. it like it just like triggered something in me. I was like, you know what? Like I have to do this. Like whatever this is, I'm doing it. Like, and getting to hold her for the first time, like it was great. But then seeing what my wife went through and everything, it was just like, it's time to shut, like shut up and step up. And, um, I've been able to generate more income and work way, way harder, wake up earlier and like do more than I ever thought I could do. 
by having that little kid. Like she is the cutest, most beautiful, most amazing thing. And she can do no wrong basically. And so with looking at like success or looking at whatever it is. And now like I get to show my daughter what it's like to have nothing and what it's like to have something. And that for me is the coolest thing because like I, like I really am so happy that I get the opportunity to teach her the value of a dollar or teach her what like anything like and she, I pray and I hope that she gets to wait uh, grow up better than I did I had an amazing family and such like that but like man like I want to be able to in a way a lot of people want to say like I want to give her the world and a lot of also a lot of people said that's like it's not about you anymore it's about her if I become a parent and my life is not about me anymore she doesn't survive like right. if I wasn't Louis Cortese, the the business owner, or I wasn't Louis Cortese, the father or the husband or Louis Cortese, the athlete, I couldn't provide for my family to make sure she survives, you know? And that's something that's so crazy to think about because she has not taken anything from my life. She's only blessed my life. Like the sacrifice is worth it. And like, I'll wake up at five in the morning with her and it's like the world hasn't woke up yet and we're chilling. She's having a bottle. I'm like, wow, like. This is crazy. A man who is working for himself is easy to stop. Mm. But a man who is working for others is, will die before he stops. Mm. For sure. Damn. Yeah. Wild. I'm definitely romanticizing the thoughts of being a dad one day. Like, I, I, I can't relate yet, yeah. but I understand in, in the slightest. Like, dude, there is there's nothing that will give you more stress and more joy. Yeah. Like... It's instinctual. It's in it's in us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's like uh, the same way being wedded and, and reproducing is in us. Then the aftermath of that reproduction is in us. It's like I gotta protect. I gotta provide. Yeah. Um, the woman feels the same way, providing for the baby and the husband, but in different aspects. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful thing, brother. It's you're a beautiful person, Louis. I know you. You say you suck a lot. You say you suck a lot. I do. But you don't. You're not half bad. <laughs> <laughs> immature weenies oh dude i appreciate you stopping by final thoughts what's your final thought my final thoughts yeah. i don't think bro i seriously don't think hmm. oh actually i do have a final thought oh boy um i realize that i detach myself from any information that doesn't matter to me, but way too hard. Because when my, like somebody will ask me how I'm doing, like, yeah, what's new? Dude, I have no idea what's new. I really can't even think about what's new. <laughs> I can't, I can't tell you anything. Let me tell you something. If that is how you are, or that is where you're at in the season of life, because seasons change, you're doing the right thing. Like, that's all I gotta say. But, there is things that you got to care about too. You know? Yeah. Like there is certain things. Well, then then the people should ask me about stuff I care about. Hey. Who's the next guest on the podcast? You know, what's the last date you went with your girl? <laughs> but yeah, I can tell that me and my uh, girl have different uh, important details okay. that we remember because uh, she'll bring up something and I have no idea. And then uh, I'll bring up something she has no idea. Mm -hmm. And then we're at odds. But well, yeah, I got to tie the knot, bro. Uh oh. I got to do it. Uh oh. Yeah, I got to figure it out. Dude. Yeah, that's what we talked about too. Yeah, yeah, that. She's so funny. I brought. I was like, yeah, I talked to Louie. and he's like, oh yeah, how's the wife and the kid? I was like, great, blah blah blah. And she's like, did you guys talk about marriage? Uh oh. And I'm like, yeah, she, bro. Ever since I met my girl, she's been, she's wanted to get married since like the Do third week. Believe in love, love. Dude. And that's a good thing because yeah. it used to annoy me. Don't get me wrong, and I, I, I'll be open and say it. Yeah. But now I'm like. How blessed! This is the. This goes back to remember, like thinking of what I'm, what I have, and not what I could have. Yes, I have a girl who wants to get married to yeah. me. Yeah, bro. Yeah, some dudes don't have That's that. Rare. They're eating Doritos and Literally. playing Call of Duty. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. That's, dude. That sounds like a great Thursday uh, afternoon, right? Sounds like my childhood. Wow, but no, I, I, yeah. So being uh, surrounding myself with mm. uh, family men too and you do that as well with matt manzari and all those guys like surrounding yourself that's with men yeah congrats that's a good point to make but even men fall you know like yes but the one thing like matt manzari bobby Jean manzari like dude they are they're amazing they're flawed they still they still argue they still make mistakes of course 
They still suck like everyone else. Where's the toaster? Oh my gosh. Honey! But they have three kids. So that means it, when you have one kid, two parents on one kid, kid can never do wrong. When you have two kids, it's one parent on each, kids can't do wrong. When you have three, one of them's always doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always the middle child. Yeah, right. No, it's always the youngest, dude. Yeah, okay. But with that being said, to, to, to add on to your point, um, yeah, there should be people, and this is to everyone, especially if you're thinking about marriage, like I'm not the perfect marriage expert. I got married after two weeks of meeting someone, but that was a God-given gift. And yep. we've had to learn and go through a lot to even get where we are. Like it does, it, 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 you suffer for the right reasons. Like, I don't care what happens in our marriage, what we go through. It's like, I'm with her for the rest of my life to death through its part. Like that much is for her. That much is clear. Yep. And like, she's had to deal with my crap. I've had to deal with her crap. Like we've gone through it. Feels so bad for her. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things that is very interesting, and this is, this could even go to boy, girl relationships, like boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever. It's like, you need to have people in your life that each of you have a mutual agreement that you trust that person's opinion and trust them to talk on behalf of your relationship. You should have a person that says uh, that she knows will respect the boundaries between your relationship and knows that the best interest of that relationship is in that person for you guys and vice versa to her. You shouldn't talk to single people about what it's like to be married. It doesn't make sense. They have no life experience. And you should be wise of the people that you do choose to talk to that are married because the old ball and chain, the whole like making jokes about your spouse and stuff like that, it will affect you more than you know. And I've had to learn that lesson. Like women get detached if they don't feel loved and men get detached if they don't feel respected. And that is a common thing. And so we've had to learn to find a community of people, whether it be two, three, four, or one people, or whoever it is, you know, that honors marriage biblically, that honors marriage to the, the standard that we have, and to basically not base our relationship or our marriage off of the height that they have, uh, that they have, have um, like, like the bar that they have set, but to respect their marriage enough and how they communicate and how they react towards each other and how they love each other it's completely different than anything I've ever experienced because like even bringing up Matt and Bobby, like we named our daughter after Bobby, like Matt, if no one knows, like Matt got electrocuted with 12,000 volts of electricity. Like he went through, like they went through an absolute living hell and you can point at God and be like, see, like he, he, he was cutting trees for a church volunteering his time. And you could even point at like, see, like God doesn't exist. Like he, like he was, he was helping a church out and that happened to him. It's like, no, like through this tragic thing happening, Matt has been able to go all over the world and speak about this and ch help change people's lives that have been burned, that have gone through it. And like God is using him to change, like literally help people. And so everyone sees what Matt went through. Like it was equivalent to like four or five electric chairs at one time, yeah. the electricity. And he looks so cool, by the way. Uh, it's crazy. He's, oh my gosh. Like for lack of better words, he looks badass. Whatever that electricity did, He's it, it like it really like it looks like somebody would purposely do that he, for like fashion week. He's a good looking dude. Yeah. But it's funny because like everyone sees what Matt went through. Everyone sees the pain and the agony and like um and like but Bobby was pregnant with their first child yeah. and had to plan her husband's funeral with <sighs> like about to have their child. Like could you imagine like being in that moment? Like obviously we can't but like the how strong she was and how like she respected every wish that Matt had and was like fighting tooth and nail and praying for her husband and like being there. We we're like, why not name our daughter after like one of the toughest, most nicest people that we've ever encountered. And like Matt and Bobby have both baptized my wife and I, like they Matt married us in his backyard. Like as much as like, I look at Brayden as like my best friend, like Matt has really became my best friend. Like I can call upon Matt for anything. And he has single-handedly been that, or his, him and his wife have been the biggest influence in our marriage, in our life, and their boys and their family. And it's like, man, like we can—they've set the bar so high, like for their life, and we respect them so much. And we're blessed to have those types of people in our life. And so it's like I encourage anyone that's in a relationship to find those people that you trust, yeah. find those people that have the best interest uh, for your marriage, for your life, because. It's crazy how many people are not for you or not for your relationship and will secretly 
tried to pull you guys apart or secretly tried to slip in. And then when, when push comes to shove, it's like, oh, I had nothing to do with that. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. like it's tough. And, and there's a force out there that doesn't want you guys to get married that, cause that, cause, and it's one of those things where the divorce rate's so high and all this, that, and the other, you have to get married for the right reasons. And if you feel that and you know that it's like, that's your person, then you go run, like get it done, dude, because there's nothing more challenging and more rewarding than marriage. Like it's nuts, but it works out. It does. Well, this is your first time on the no second time on the podcast as a married man mm-hmm. but first time as a dad first time as a dad yeah dude what next time what's it gonna be three chicken nuggets get out of here something like that if my wife had it her way we'd have a small baseball team <laughs> good i'm like lucy jean you are perfect i love you you're amazing cute name yeah very indie yeah. very like she's gonna be a smart girl oh, yeah, she's sure. gonna be fun dude she loves music she loves everything like i i I'm so excited to see her grow up. Like yeah. she is going to be something special and mark my words in history. Like I just know it's coming. Like it's going to be sweet. I love you, man. Love you too, brother. Bedwetters, uh, like and subscribe. Louis Cortese always stops by and just drops some dimes on us. Hey, eh? it's, it's Making a beautiful it hail thing. in here, baby. Yeah. I'm surprised I didn't cry this time. Oh, you were crying. I was on the verge. I've been holding back tears the entire time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Man. If we cry every time you come on the show, that's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. Oh, but uh, Louis Cortese. Hi, I'm Brant. This is The Wet Slap. If you enjoyed this podcast, like and subscribe. We post bi-weekly. Um, add this to your shows. I don't see why not. You yeah. make quality content and it's authentic i'm gonna be honest i feel like this is one of the only authentic podcasts out there i'm not bradley martin challenging people to fight like we're just talking about real stuff real life things yes sir shout out bradley you're really cool too though actually he's too big i don't want to like start beef or something you know what i mean damage control over here damage control yeah (laughs) i'm having uh in my ear right now no uh pull back pull back (laughs) yeah guys um love you guys no, it's not done yet. Oh! We're not done. We're ah! Not done. Get the camera on me immediately. Ah! Go to takefunseriously.shop and get your hat that you actually need. PJ, cut that out. If you didn't cut that out. PJ, I'm giving you a hat to keep that in right now. Okay. I yeah. Ah, oh, damn. Love you, bro. Thank you guys so much. And check up on your friends because they're worth your time. <laughs>